Hello and welcome to the Brown University Spine Fellowship for the year 2021-2022. I'm Alan Daniels. I'm the chief of the spine division, also the fellowship director. Now, uh, I generally give this presentation to people coming to Rhode Island, but everything's a little different now. And I wanna say welcome to Rhode Island. If you ever come visit us, uh, whether it be for an interview on vacation or come do fellowship, Rhode Island is an absolutely wonderful place. Uh, not a lot of people know a lot of the great things about Rhode Island. It is the ocean state. We have 400 years of history here and 400 miles of coastline. And uh, it's been said that you're never two, more than two miles from salt water. And uh, there's a lot of great beaches here. Some of me and my partners live uh, down right by the water. It's uh, really an absolutely beautiful place to be. Uh, not only do we have great beaches, uh, Providence, Rhode Island is a nice city. It's the Renaissance city. It's the third largest in New England. It was one of the first cities in the U.S. to declare independence and has a, a great history to it. It's home to eight hospitals and five colleges. It's safe, it's cheap, it's close, uh, it's, it's an outdoorsy climate, and uh, there's essentially no traffic, so it's a great place to be. And some people say it's the best food in the Northeast. Tons of great restaurants here. Not far away, Newport, Rhode Island, just south, uh, Nantucket, Block Island, Martha's Vineyard are three islands that are all uh, within a short day trip away. Boston, New York are both quite close. Uh, Boston's less than an hour. New York is uh, a little more than three hours away. And then Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire are uh, right up north and are easily accessible. Brown University uh, is Ivy League school founded in 1764, seventh oldest in the United States. Relatively small school, about 6,000 undergraduates. All 50 states and 63 countries are represented and we have uh, 37 NCAA Division I teams who we help take care of. The Alpert Medical School at Brown University is an interesting medical school. It actually has an old history. Then it actually closed down until 1975 and reopened. Uh, now it's kind of been reinvigorated with a brand new medical school that's less than half a mile from Rhode Island Hospital, where's our primary teaching campus. And like Providence, there's been great growth and development with a bunch of new buildings going up. And it's just a, it's a really exciting atmosphere. The Brown Affiliated Hospitals, the primary teaching uh, component we have is at Lifespan, uh, which includes Rhode Island Hospital, Hasbro Children's Hospital, and the Miriam Hospital. Got about a thousand inpatient beds. Uh, it's the busiest level one trauma center in New England uh, with uh, 200,000 emergency visits a year and 50,000 patient discharges. So it's a busy place. We're really uh, the only show in town for trauma between Boston and Hartford. Um, and, and New Haven kind of in triangle there. So, so we get a lot of trauma. Kettle Point, uh, this is a rendering actually of our, our new building, uh, which is now uh, in service. Uh, we have outpatient spine surgery uh, with six ORs. Uh, we have an EOS and it's just a great place where we, uh, where we see patients and do surgery. The orthopedic residency, which is important to your fellowship, you know, our residents are great to work with. And it's the fourth oldest, old, fourth oldest in the United States. Fracture Service was uh, founded by Murray Danforth in 1931. Our current chairman, Ed Ackleman, has been here since 2015, is, is a, a great guy and a great leader. We have six residents a year. Uh, everyone does a trauma fellowship, I think, as you know. We have fellows and, and a bunch of specialties. And, and in the, on the spine service, we get a PGY-3 and a PGY-5, and then also have a PA who does floor work. Our department has great research. Uh, we're one of the top five funded research uh, departments in the nation for NIH funding. Uh, we've got a lot of laboratory space. And um, as many of you know, you know, we and I do a lot of research. The, your primary uh, function, in my opinion, of fellowship is to learn to be a spine surgeon, but if you want to do research, love to help you do it. The spine service um, includes myself, uh, Dr. Phil Lucas, who's been here for over 40 years, has a great wealth of experience, uh, Alex Robertson, John Servian, Dominic Kleinhens, and then Aaron Curris, who just joined us last year, and Craig Eberson, who does PD spine. We also have five non-operative MDs. We have a true tertiary care spine referral center. We do all sorts of work. Uh, degenerative work continues to be the lion's share of what we do. Uh, probably between 60 and 80%, depending on the surgeon. Um, but we do a lot of trauma, tumor, infection, deformity, and, 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 um, and again, for pediatric, uh, full gamut. Over 1,500 cases a year are done the spine service, so plenty of uh, case volume for the fellows. 
For the educational summary for our fellowship, I think this is really important. We have a mentorship model. And so you'll be with uh, one attending where you come and, and work with them, seeing their pre-ops, doing the surgery and seeing their post-ops. So that being said, you're not a slave on the spine service where we're making you just come and, and grind through a full office day, you know, two or three times a week. It really, uh, the mentorship is designed so that the training surgeon can really take the fellow through the training process carefully. And as I state here at the bottom of the slide, I just want you to know there's some operating room and some office experience, and it really is important to have both. Um, you wouldn't want to do a fellowship where you just do five days in the OR. Despite we all like being in the OR, you've got to do some office time. And so you have graduated independence. And what we mean by that is we have a transition to practice model. What that means is the first day you start, we're not going to throw you in the OR, you know, exposing for a T2 to pelvis or putting in screws or doing trauma. First day in the OR, you're going to come and do the case with us, and uh, we will assess where you are in your learning process. Same with your office experience. You know, the first day you won't be seeing a bunch of patients, but over time, as you show that you are able to do cases on your own, you have attending privileges, and you'll be able to do those cases on your own, transitioning to your own practice. What we mean by that is that you also have your own office. You'll see the patients that come out of the emergency room. This is your private practice. You can do what you want with these people. There will be people that are begging you to do, um, you know, a fusion or a discectomy or a mile off the operation, and you'll be able to take that patient to the OR. If it's your first month, you'll have me or one of my co-faculty do the case with you. If it's your last month, you do it on your own. We're there. If you run into trouble, you give me a call. Even if it's the middle of the night, I'm happy to come in. But you won't clearly, when you're 11 months into fellowship, you don't need one of us there holding your hand through the whole case. And it's a really powerful training tool to be able to transition into your own practice rather than just have your first day on the job out of fellowship, the first day you ever signed in a patient or, or were truly responsible for that patient. For our conference schedule, um, just like other places, we've got uh, didactics and we do have a combined orthopedic neurosurgery conference. This is a great conference on Mondays. Our neurosurgery department uh, includes uh, Zia Gokaslin, who's a world famous tumor surgeon. So we see and collaborate on you know complex things like chordomas and such with them. We have our own indications conference Tuesday, uh, and then uh, other of course conferences throughout the year, including uh, cadaver labs with the residents. As I said, degenerative is the lion's share of what we do, especially being in Rhode Island with only a million people uh, in the actual state. Our catchment area is actually nearly double that because we get Southern Massachusetts and Connecticut, but degenerative work is um, uh, really what pays the bills in our department, which is a private, we have a private academic uh, department. And so um, uh, we will teach you also the business of medicine. We do a lot of cervical work, uh, a lot of myelopathy operations. Um, we do disc replacements and hybrid uh, fusions. Uh, as I said, trauma is pretty busy. We share with neurosurgery. So we do one week on with ortho, one week on for neurosurge. Uh, when there's two fellows, of course, your call schedule is not too burdensome. It's one week a month. And the calls can be anywhere. We, you know, last week we had a fairly light call. In fact, one of the lightest I've ever had. We only had two operative cases come out of call. Average would be more like four to five. And then we've had up to 10 and 11 trauma cases come in a week. Keeps, uh, keeps it interesting. A lot of thoracolumbar trauma. Uh, we do a fair amount of tumor work, uh, just seeing that there's few people right in this state that'll take care of it other than us. Do vertebrectomies. We do it more and more MIS, this is an old case, but we do laterals, uh, tubes, we're doing more um, uh, different stimulators and such. Dr. Servian and Kleinhens are doing more and more here at the Outpatient Surgery Center. Uh, my specialty is uh, adult deformity, Dr. Curris and, and I do a lot of this stuff together. Um, you know, whether it's AIS all grown up like this or really complicated curves or uh, sagittal plane deformity, we do it all and have a pretty good volume of uh, adult deformity, which we will all be seeing in our practices over time. And then the PD deformity for the really complex stuff, uh, Craig Eberson will work with one of us often. He does all the, you know, AIS and more simple cases on his own, but for bad neuromusculars or congenital things or people that need multi-level VCRs, I'll help them out. He and I did a six-level VCR a couple years ago. As I said, we do a lot of research. Um, 
uh, we've got some different uh, studies. I, I'm part of the ISSG. We have a 10-year prospective deformity study going on and published a lot of papers. You can see the growth. You know, in 2014, we had 16 published papers, then 29, then 42, and this is per year. 43 published 2017, then 58, 2018, 2019, and we're on track to write around 60 more papers this year. So there's not a lot of places around the country publishing as much as we do. You know, one of the important things also is that our residents are really interested in spine, and it's because we make it look good. It's uh, We have a good time doing it. We don't burn out. We don't burn our fellows out. Um, we take good care of people. Our faculty tends to be pretty balanced, you know, happily married family people who also know how to work hard. Had a lot of great interest in spine recently. I think this is the fellowship years that they went into, ended up starting fellowship, but you know, 2018, we had one go in, 2019, two people, 2020, two people. And there's multiple, I know there's at least three residents right now who are interested in spine. We'll be going into spine. And if just since my time here, since, and I was a resident here, you know, we uh, train, sent our residents to Emory, Jeff, Pitt, Wash U, Colorado, Brown, San Diego, Hopkins, and, and others. And so, you know, we're obviously, we've got good relationships with these places, sending people to some great programs. It's just kind of a, an idea of the culture we have here. Uh, so with that, I just want to thank you for spending the time to listen to this. I would love to answer any questions uh, people ever have. People can always email me or get a hold of me. And um, I hope you'll take a close look at our program. This is program at Brown is probably not always regarded as one of the obvious top tier programs in the country, but I assure you that the training is as good as anywhere. Clinical content's great, the faculty care, and uh, can help propel your career, whether you're going to private practice or academics. Thank you very much.